Hi, welcome to part three in our segment related to <clears throat> Indian and South East Asian art. In our last two segments, we talked about um, Hinduism. We're going to be looking um, at Buddhist philosophy and art um, in our next um, sections. So, still practiced today as the dominant religion of Southeast Asia, Buddhism is a spiritual force that teaches individuals how to cope in a world full of misery. The central figure, Buddha, who is not a god, rejected the worldly concerns of life as a royal, um, at a royal court and sought fulfillment traveling the countryside and living as an ascetic. Um, in Buddhism, life is, is believed to be full of suffering that is compounded by an endless cycle of birth and rebirth. The aim of every Buddhist is to end the cycle and achieve oneness with the Supreme Spirit, which involves a final release of extinguishing of the soul. This can only happen by accumulating spiritual merit through devotion to good works, charity, love of all beings, and religious fever. Um, Buddhist art has a rich cultural iconography. Some of the most um, some most common symbols include the lion, a symbol of Buddha's royalty, the wheel, Buddha's law, um, a lotus, a symbol of Buddha's pure nature. The lotus grows in swamps, but mud slides off its surface. Columns um, surrounded by a wheel, and this is meant to represent Buddhist's teaching. An empty throne, Buddha, or a reminder of Buddha's presence. So what you're looking at here are characteristics of a Buddha image. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about these um, when we look at some, some images of Buddha. So it is important to remember that among the founders of um, the world's major religions, the Buddha was the only teacher who did not claim to be that other than an ordinary human being. Other teachers were either God or directly inspired by God. Um, the Buddha was simply a human being, and he claimed no inspiration from any god or external power. Um, he attributed all his realization, attainment, and achievements to human endeavor and human intelligence. And so that's why I think, it, you know, this religion can be very appealing, especially to, you know, some very, you know, especially to very progressive types. Um, a man, and only a man, can become a Buddha. Every man has within himself the potential of becoming a Buddha if he so wills it and works at it. Nevertheless, the Buddha was such a perfect human that he came to be regarded in popular religion as a superhuman. Man's position, according to Buddha, Buddhism, is supreme. Man is his own master, and there is no higher being or power that sits in judgment over his destiny. So again, very, very different from some of the other religions. Um, like Islam or, or Christianity. Um, if the Buddha is to be called a savior at all, it is only in the sense that he discovered and showed the path to liberation, to nirvana, the path we are all invited to follow ourselves. It is with this principle of individual responsibility that Buddha offers freedom to his disciples. This freedom of thought is unique in the history of religion and is necessary because, according to the Buddha, Man's emancipation depends on his own realization of truth and not, of, um, and not on the benevolent grace of God or an external um, power as a reward for his obedient behavior. So what you're looking at are some different representations of Buddha um, and, and a lot of um, sculptures and friezes and relief carvings depict the sort of the main events of Buddha's life and, and they are very well known. He was born in Siddhartha, um, uh, Gautama um, of the Shaka clan. He is said to have had a miraculous birth, um, precocious childhood, and a princely upbringing. He, is ma um, he married and had a son. He encountered an old man, a sick man, a corpse, and a religious ascetic. He became aware of suffering and became convinced that his mission was to seek liberation for himself and others. He renounced his princely life and spent six years studying um, doctrines and undergoing yogic um, austerities. He then gave up um, aesthetic practices 
um, for a normal life. He spent seven weeks in the shade of the Bodhi tree until finally one night toward dawn enlightenment came. Then he preached sermons and embarked on a missionary travel for 45 years. He affected the lives of thousands, high and low. At the age of 80, he experienced his um, para-nirvana, um, this idea of extinction itself. Um, this is the most basic outline of his life and mission. Um, the literature inspired by Buddha's story is as various as those who have told it in the last 25,000 years. Um, to the first of his followers and, and the tradition associated with um, Theravada Buddhism and figures like the great um, Emperor Ashoka, the Buddhist was a man, not a god. He was a teacher, not a savior. To this day, the Theravada tradition prevails in parts of India, Sri Lanka, um, Myanmar, Cambo Cambodia, and Thailand. To those who, a few hundred years later, formed the Mahayana school, Buddha was a savior and often a god, um, a god concerned with man's sorrow above all else. The Mahayana form of Buddhism is in Tibet, Mongolia, Vietnam, Korea, China, and Japan. And we will be going to Korea, China, and Japan um, um, later. The historical Buddha, Siddhartha Gautama, is also known as um, Shakyamuni. And again, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing any of these names. I, I'm sure I am. I'm just doing the best I can, though. So what you're looking at um, up here is a, a Buddha at the moment of enlightenment um, meditating under a Bodhi tree. Um, and this is a very typical representation of Buddha. You know, he's seated in this lotus position. He has some sort of mudra. Um, and here is an, a representation. The head is missing of the fasting Buddha. This is when he became an ascetic um, and, you know, fasted. When we talk about um, the religion that worships the Buddha, we refer to it as a singular Buddhism. However, it may be more accurate to talk about Buddhisms, plural. The religion that um, originated in India took on so many different forms and adapted in such a variety of ways that it is often difficult to see how the various sects of Buddhism are related. Um, what do they all have in common? Um, the worship of the Buddha, of course. But who was Buddha? Was Buddha a man or a god? In early forms of Buddhism, Buddha is most definitely a man. As the religion changes and adopts, the Buddha is deified. Buddhism originated in what is today modern India, where it grew into an organized religion practiced by monks, nuns, and lay people. Its beliefs were written down, forming a large canon. Buddhist images were also devised to be worshipped in sacred spaces from India. Buddhism spread throughout Asia. Um, in order to appreciate the magnitude of the Buddha's achievement, we should try to imagine what life was like in early India, particularly in towns and villages of the Ganges River Valley, um, like um, Kapilavastu in the foothills of the Himalayan mountains, and what is now the country of Nepal. This is the area in which the Buddha was likely born in about five 60 BCE, every year the river flooded the valley, destroying crops. Monsoons came every year, too, creating famine. Um, there were also severe droughts and diseases such as dysentery and cholera. Um, the Bra um, Brahma, Brahmanas, um, the Hindu priests, chanted the Vedic hymns, the oldest scriptures of Hinduism, and offered fire sacrifices to Brahma, the Hindu god of creation. However, they did not improve conditions for the common man. From the earliest times, Hindu society was stratified. Castes were firmly established in the economy with um, the Brahmanas and created, and the and Brahmanas, the creators and perpetuators of social order, highly favorable to themselves. So, you know, if, if you were on the low totem of the of the caste system you know you weren't finding very much relief one of the buddha's greatest spiritual accomplishments was the doctrine of the middle way he discovered the doctrine of the middle way 
only after he lived as an ascetic um, for some time, this experience that one should shun extremes. One should avoid the pursuit of worldly desires on the one hand and severe aesthetic discipline on the other. Despite his doubts about existing religious practices and his strong sense of mission, he did not think of himself as the creator of a new religion. Rather, he felt the need to purify the religion of his day. Buddha took for granted the truth of the cosmological Buddha took for granted the truth of cosmological perspective indigenous to the Indus Valley, a worldview that is often associated with Hindu conceptions. One must understand what time and space looked like in the Buddhist framework of the ancient of ancient India. This framework was shared by all, whether one was adherent of Brahma, and I, I can't say this, Brahmanism, um, Jainism, and Buddhism. Samsara and time. Samsara, a Sanskrit word, Sanskrit word literally meaning a round um, or a cycle. In the ancient Indian worldview, this means the endless cycle of rebirth and death. There is no beginning and no end. This endless cycle is governed by karma, casualty. In ancient India, time is measured in kalpa. This is an unending cycle of destruction, rubble, renovation, um, renovation and duration. Each period is 20 kalpa long, and they are thought of as a circle. Destruction has a beginning, but it gets progressively worse. There are um, there are scourges of fire, water, and wind. Rubble, space, um, and these are terms, um, is dark and empty. Only winds exist in this stage with seeds of karma. Renovation, um, this is the phase when things build up from the bottom. Um, so you have earth, metal, water, and wind. Whirling wind forms a disk of water. Impurities float to the top and form a disk of metal. The disk breaks down and forms the earth. Duration, this is the phase of preservation. And at the end of this phase, um, um, uh, sentient um, beings appear. Mount um, Sumeru or Meru is the cosmic axis. This is the link between heaven and earth. Um, so this is an axis mundi. Um, the mountain is the center of the world in this cosmological conception, but physically and in terms of importance. On top of Mount um, Sumeru are the palaces of the gods. Mount Sumeru is surrounded by seven chains of mountains um, and an ocean that has four continents. North equals rectangle, west equals circle, south equals trapezoid. Um, gem, but but Vipa, where humans live, east equals um, crescent moon. Um, the universe is vertically structured. At the top is the realm of no form. This realm has no qualities that can be perceived by the senses. It is impossible to have a conception of it. Next are the realms of form that can be perceived in various states of meditation. One can see pleasant sights, bright lights, and perceive coolness. Below, in the realm of desire, this realm has six levels. This is um, our realm, or the human realm. The six levels are the six paths of rebirth. The highest realm is that of the gods, um, Deva, D-E-V-A. Halfway between gods and humans are demigods, Asura, A-S-U-R-A. Humans and animals dwell on the surface of um, Jem, Pud, Vipa. Um, hungry ghosts inhabit the shadow world below the animals. This level has much pain and suffering. Beings here are always hungry and never satiated. Um, hell being occupied by the lowest level. Um, there are eight levels within this level. Um, at the eighth and lowest level, there is no rest between tortures. And so this is sort of um, their sort of view of heaven and hell. Um, how do people beings move about the world? Um, and so the answer is karma. And you've probably heard of karma. Karma is the law that regulates all life in samsara. Existence and time and space is ruled by karma. Karma means action or deed. 
Every action has a result. Every deed has an effect. Karma is a built-in universe scale for good and evil. Good leads to good result and vice versa. Karma governs the long term and short term. Karma is never destroyed. In the short term, um, good deeds lead to a good result and bad deeds lead to a bad result. Karma transgresses from one life to another. It determines how um, a being will be reborn, higher or lower. Karma is not predestination because the concept of predestination does not take into account free will. Your current circumstances are determined by deed in your previous life, but between the present and the future, there is free will. Upward mobility is possible. What are the implications of the Buddhist worldview? Being reborn, a human is rare and important. Rare, especially in the time of Buddha. Buddha is born only in a small time period within the phase of destruction. We are fortunate to have access to his teachings, since there is limited time and place to be given the chance to encounter Buddha. And a being can only encounter Buddha and benefit in the human realm. How does one achieve salvation? All is um, impermanent. Um, <laughs> impermanent. All is um, silical, or, you know, coming from cycle. All is painful. Even God suffer. Um, there are only gods for one lifetime, and then they are reborn lower down. Also, gods do not have access to Buddha. Beings need to find a way out of the endless cycle of rebirth. The goal is nirvana. Again, nirvana is extinction. Extinction. Nirvana is the traditional name for what is um, for is the traditional name for that which is not samsara. Where is nirvana? Nowhere. Nirvana is outside the vertical concept of the universe. All right, so I hope you enjoyed your little um, lesson, <laughs> your little religion lesson on Buddhism. Um, it is important that you do have a, somewhat of an understanding of the background of Buddhism in order to appreciate some of the architecture and art that we're going to be looking at. So you can think of this as sort of an introduction to Buddhism. In our next segment, we are going to be looking at some architecture and art related um, to Buddhism. So stay tuned.